welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us for today's edition of Alaska Weather. On the satellite you can see uh, a lot of clouds associated with a frontal boundary that pushed uh, northward. Uh, a couple of waves developing along that. That kept the rain going uh, much of the day today uh, from the southern areas up uh, all the way to the north, low pressure here. Pulling northward uh, brought a little gusty wind condition into the Yakutat area and this portion of the coast. Uh, but that uh, moved northward, changed to showers this afternoon. And the whole band here gradually will be shifting inland, but uh, some more showers here off to the southwest. So the rain should become a little less continuous, more showery later tonight and tomorrow. Otherwise, sunshine over south central Alaska, back in all the way over to Bristol Bay and up into Norton Sound as well as Kodiak Island. Very nice day today over toward Prince William Sound, but some of this moisture coming northward and overrunning the colder air, snow the entire day over the uh, eastern Tanana Valley, 40 mile country on up to about Eagle, uh, reporting snow much of the day all the way down to the Wrangell Mountains. And uh, moisture also back to the west and northwest with a lot of clouds here. See several bands coming through uh, the southeast flow coming up, or the flow coming up from the southeast, kind of colliding with the northwesterly flow. And that boundary right from the Arctic Village area down through the west central Tanana Valley. And that extends all the way down through the Cuscombe Valley and along the west slopes of the Alaska Range. There are a few snow showers all the way down to uh, Sparavon and some light snow around McGrath. A little more continuous uh, but light over the central Tanana Valley, but there's some flurries and light snow reported over the Koyukuk Valley as well as out toward the uh, Kobuk Valley. Clouds, light winds over the s northern Bering Sea, a few flurries in there as well from St. Lawrence Island back up towards uh, Tin City and uh, wind and rain associated with this uh, storm out here over the Bering Sea. Uh, on the increase there, you see it started out uh, not too bad here over the eastern Aleutians, but uh, some rain moving in this afternoon but only about uh, three hundredths of an inch falling at uh, Dutch Harbor as of 4 p.m. this afternoon. St. Paul picked up about a tenth of an inch, and the uh, winds on the increase, mostly back in this area ahead of the front, we had gusts as that came uh, by Atka, gusts over 60 miles per hour with that system. The low developing back over the western Aleutians uh, this afternoon, that'll be tracking eastward, but today you can see the rain pulling into the Pribilofs and the extending southward, the heaviest rain back to the west here just ahead of the frontal system. And uh, along with the strongest winds to the north though, not much of a gradient at all, light winds in the colder air up here with some light snow and flurries, St. Lawrence Island up into the Bering Strait, and then a couple of troughs dropping southeastward there associated with an upper level low pressure area and trough uh, bringing light snow, widespread cloudiness and light snow with areas of fog along the Arctic coast. Uh, again, that snow all the way down, just linking up with this boundary right through here, coming down the west side of the Alaska Range. But uh, again, good sunshine here over south central Alaska, the Sitna Valley. And uh, into the uh, Copper River Basin, it was the east side though, catching the moisture from this low, tracking northward still this morning off the coast there, but it's now moved up and uh, again, the trough kind of catching up with the frontal boundary here. So that uh, kept the rain going, but eventually it'll be changing over to showers uh, tonight and tomorrow or for tonight, you can see scattered showers here over the southern areas, still uh, a little more widespread shower activity up to the north with uh, yet another low pressure area here right off the coast. Another one forms, could bring a little moisture to the southern 
uh, Kenai Peninsula. Otherwise, you should stay fair over Prince William Sound, variable clouds, Manuska Valley, right on down Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island, in between uh, the low here in the Gulf and then the much stronger system back here to the west. And there are uh, storm warnings out for the central and eastern Aleutians tonight. You can see that front moving very rapidly by about uh, 3 or 4 a.m. Should be about this position along the Alaska Peninsula, arcing back to near the Pribilofs. Uh, big increase in the winds here over the northern Bering Sea. You can see uh, east northeasterlies with gale force winds uh, developing over all of the Bering Sea tonight. And uh, storm warnings again for the eastern Aleutians back toward the Adak Atka area and gales all the way out to Shimian at two. Break ahead of the system here, holding uh, fair skies over the southwest interior. Variable clouds, a few scattered snow showers or flurries may break out here with that offshore flow over the uh, northwest part of the state, uh, but still hold on to the snow here over the eastern interior. Periods of snow at times, uh, not too heavy, could be an inch or so accumulation, and then that'll continue along the Arctic coast there with high pressure just north-northwest of Barrow. So winds will be fairly light up in that area with uh, still showers here over the panhandle. And for tomorrow, those showers uh, will continue as this trough uh, kind of stalls out here right along the North Gulf Coast areas, uh, drier down to the south, fair chance of sunshine in the afternoon there, or throughout the entire day actually. Uh, Heidelberg over to Metlakatla and then northward, possibly to Wrangell. You can see the front swings through Kodiak Island, so the uh, rain coming in tonight continues through tomorrow, heavy at times. There'll probably be a narrow band of gale force winds ahead of this front, uh, right up across the Bar Barren Islands into Kamishak Bay, at least for a portion of the day tomorrow, and uh, then drop back. Uh, definitely lighter winds across Kodiak Island behind the front. And then as the low tracks eastward here, those storm force winds, uh, 50 to 60 knots uh, coming eastward across the eastern Aleutians and should uh, probably even develop over the Alaska Peninsula as well. This low here dropping southeastward, that will probably bring gale force winds or storm force winds back into the central Aleutians uh, tomorrow, especially on the north side of the Bering Sea. More of a northeast direction now out here over the northern Bering Sea. With, uh, so that means uh, relatively dry, colder temperatures with a few snow showers. The main precip down here with the uh, low pressure areas over the southern Bering Sea. So a lot of showers and gusty winds, gale force winds through tomorrow again, uh, gradually diminishing from west to east once this trough begins to pull off to the southeast and less snow up over the eastern interior, still uh, hanging on over the eastern Tanana Valley, especially the north slopes of the eastern Alaska range, but just uh, not nearly as widespread as today, that whole area pulling off into northwest Canada and even less snow along the Arctic coast, still some flurries and fog and lower visibilities up there on the east side, but uh, improving here to the west. And Saturday's outlook, uh, you can see the main low here still in Bristol Bay and there'll be a swath of uh, precipitation. Could be mixed, especially tomorrow night. Bristol Bay areas here uh, could see a chance of some freezing rain. Uh, more of a wintry mix though from the northeast Bristol Bay area up into uh, Cook Inlet, uh, chance of rain or snow, rain along the coast. This front actually catching up with the uh, trough and uh, so not much of a break in between there with uh, rain down along the southeast coast and uh, periods of rain for uh, Juneau all the way down to uh, Dixon entrance but a mixture up to the north and then cutting off as you get to the Alaska Range, but still some light snow possible there along the northern slopes of the eastern Alaska Range, but not too bad. Gusty winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour. Uh, could see some gusts up to 30 miles an hour at the higher elevations, uh, such as Indian Mountain, but a pretty brisk day across the upper Yukon Valley. Lighter winds with less gradient up along the north slope and the Arctic coast just uh, looking 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, for the wind speeds there or less, but then picking up here as you come down the coastline and uh, gale warnings are out uh, again, come back into play there for the Cape Lisburn Point Hope areas and about uh, looks like small craft advisories also for Saturday for the uh, Chukchi Sea down in toward Kotzebue Sound 
and pretty windy conditions, probably looking at gale force winds continuing uh, at least for a part of the day from the Pribilofs, but there'll be a band of gale force winds right through the north central Bering Sea to St. Lawrence Island. Northwesterlies down to uh, as low as 20 knots out over the western Aleutians to uh, 25 to 30 knots as you uh, get to the east side there and that colder air coming southward, uh, precipitation will take the form of mostly snow late in the day. Keep it mixed though here for the uh, Unalaska area up to the Alaska Peninsula and this system here sliding just south of Kodiak Island so that'll keep the chances of uh, rain going especially south of the area there and then this moisture is lifting to the north and for temperatures today southeast coast ranged from the upper 30s at 39 at Wrangell to uh, 45 at Sitka, 42 Yakutat as well as uh, Skagway to 43 in Juneau, Cordova 38 degrees just five hundredths of an inch of precipitation measured there contrast that with 63 hundredths at Yakutat and one of the heavier amounts of uh, Rain was down at a net with eight tenths of an inch, otherwise uh, about 32 and a half an inch falling across the panhandle. And again, some of that moisture sliding northward here, just nine degrees at Gulcana, while Northway at 15. 16 in Fairbanks, 30 degrees in Talkeetna, Anchorage 29 degrees. These are all 4 p.m. temperatures. 39 in Homer, about the same, near 40 Kodiak, and uh, mid to upper 20s out over Bristol Bay. But uh, Dillingham pushed up to 34. Uh, rather chilly up over the interior with uh, lower teens uh, to uh, well 10 degrees of Fort Yukon. Ambler one degree above zero this afternoon. 22 over at Kaktovik, 15 at Barrow. Back into the uh, 20s there on the western coastal areas. And uh, Schism Ref 27 degrees with Nome 24. 30 degrees at Gamble, 15. As I mentioned, some light snow in McGrath and uh, 21 at Bethel, or actually 26 at Bethel, 21 at uh, Envic, and mid to upper 20s along the southwest coast. For the Aleutians, uh, St. Paul 39, St. George 42, but pretty mild here. In fact, the mildest weather in the state, 52 at Unalaska and uh, 8 at Kanapke into the 50s. Both earlier were in the mid 50s, about 54. Lower 40s for the peninsula. Lows tonight, uh, single numbers over a widespread portion of the interior right out to the Arctic coast. Some areas could drop below zero and uh, otherwise teens here south central Alaska 20s to mid 30s along the North Gulf Coast upper 30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle. That same temperature pattern expected for the Aleutians and the highs tomorrow uh, lower teens for the Arctic coast and anywhere from 5 to 15 above for the north slope, especially along the Brooks Range, into the 20s for the Seward Peninsula, 22 for Nome, the forecast high and teens here over the Yukon Custom Delta, but uh, much milder down across Bristol Bay, 32 forecast for King Salmon, mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula again out across all of the Aleutians, and 40s for the Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, uh, mid 30s to lower 40s. And flying weather with a uh, band of moisture here, marginal VFR coming across the southeast coast, extending back to the west, right along the coastline there into Prince William Sound. And an IFR with that front as it comes up across Kodiak Island throughout the day tomorrow on that area will be extending back into the Bering Sea, something like this, and then wrapping back around into the eastern Aleutians. Possible IFR up over the eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, look for marginal conditions down to the Alaska Range and over the uh, upper Yukon Valley, possibly extending down to the White Mountains and just some patchy stuff along the eastern Alaska Range. Passes, Anatovic, marginal VFR, especially on the northern entrance, uh, better to the south. Same forecast for Adigan, marginal VFR mainly on the north side with uh, Lake Clark and Merrill. VFR, watch for marginal VFR to possibly develop here on the eastern entrance of both passes. Rainy though, should be VFR throughout uh, much of the day tomorrow, all of the day tomorrow, windy VFR. And Isabel, Mentasta, both VFR, possible marginal VFR at times uh, locally on those northern entrances. And for Tanita, good VFR tomorrow. Portage, marginal VFR, east side here could become IFR. Uh, so look for uh, ceilings visibilities to lower throughout the day. Starting out marginal, possibly coming IFR in the afternoon. Cheryl Coot and White, marginal VFR. 
For the freezing levels, uh, the surface here cutting across the Bering Sea north of the Pribilofs, actually 2,000 feet there late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Ahead of that frontal system, you can see the warmer wedge of air coming northward ahead of that front, uh, spreading up toward Kodiak Island, otherwise uh, below 2,000 feet across all of the southeast coast. Icing threats here, uh, occasional moderate possible, below seven to 9,000 feet uh, ahead of the front here as it pushes up across Kodiak Island. Whole thing uh, kind of lifting northward, pushing off to the east, north of the Aleutians now, so chances diminish along the Aleutian chain throughout the day tomorrow. And then with the trough, uh, areas of uh, mixed rime icing type of pattern here over the southeast coast and possible icing up here over the northeast interior. Winds aloft uh, showing one low lifting northward. That's the one coming northward currently. It'll be about that position uh, tomorrow continuing northward. High pressure out near Wrangell Island there, so northeast flow coming down where the two branches meet, about 140 knots here, uh, but south of the Alaska Peninsula, a couple of troughs back off to the southwest. And at 9,000 feet northeasterly, it's 25 to 35 knots, western Arctic coast right across the Seward Peninsula, up to 40 knots there across the northern Bering Sea, more lighter and variable. And then westerly is 50 knots here along the Aleutians. So just south of Kodiak Island and the 3,000 foot winds showing 55 knot winds here from the Alaska Peninsula out to the central Aleutians diminishing back towards Shimia and uh, easterlies to southeasterly, <coughs> excuse me, 30 to 35 knots there along the North Gulf Coast, lighter up over the inland areas. And uh, with the uh, 30 to 40 knot winds possible at 3,000 feet here up over the interior, Look for occasional moderate chop uh, to go along with that, extending right out into the northern Bering Sea, Norton Sound, southern Seward Peninsula, a band of uh, more turbulent conditions there ahead of that front as it uh, pushes northeastward. And then with the main low center, severe, pretty possible later tonight and tomorrow here for the Alaska Peninsula, all the way out to the central Aleutians. And after hangar flying, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. <laughs> Mercury and the Maiden versus Mars and the Teapot. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory, and we're here to help you. Be sure you know what you're seeing in the night sky when you look, look up. We have two planet star scoochies coming up next week on the night of November 3rd and the morning of November 4th. On Monday night, November 3rd, the red planet Mars passes exceptionally close to the star in the top of the teapot in Sagittarius. And later that evening, just before sunrise on the morning of Tuesday, November 4th, the planet Mercury will have a close encounter with the bright star Spica in Virgo the Maiden. Let's show you. Okay, we've got our skies set to Monday night, November 3rd, just after sunset facing southwest. Here you'll see eight bright stars that mark an asterism known as the teapot. If you look closely on the night of November 3rd, the star marking the top of the teapot will have a reddish companion. That bright light is the red planet Mars. We don't often get to talk about the individual stars of the teapot, but this star is quite special. Its Bayer designation is Lambda Sagittarii. However, it was known to the ancients as Caus Borealis because it marked the northern point of the bow of Sagittarius the Centaur Archer. Caus Borealis is an orange subgiant star about 11 times the diameter and two and a half times the mass of our sun. It's also 78 light years away from us. So the light you see tonight coming from Caus Borealis left the star back in 1936. This particular passage of Mars near Caus Borealis is special because since the star is so close to the ecliptic, it is occasionally occulted by the moon and some of the planets. For example, the last time Caus Borealis was occulted by a planet was when Venus blocked it from view on November 19, 1984. This passage, however, will not result in an occultation, but Mars and Caus Borealis will be tantalizingly close to each other. Definitely something to look out for. 
Now, for you early morning planet watchers, we have another planet star rendezvous to show you. Okay, we have our skies set for about an hour before sunrise on the morning of Tuesday, November 4th, facing east. You'll see the stars of the constellation Virgo the Maiden rising just south of east. You'll see three bright objects near the horizon. The star Arcturus will be just to the north of east, and the planet Mercury will be just to the south of due east. The bright star Spica, which marks the stalk of grain Virgo is holding, is just to the right of the planet Mercury. If you've never been able to spot Mercury, and know for certain that it is indeed Mercury, this is a good time to try your hand at finding it. Spica is a blue-white star approximately 262 light years away from us, and over 12,000 times as bright as our Sun. Mercury is positioned in just the right spot in the solar system from us, that it will appear slightly brighter than Spica. Since there are no bright stars near the center of the constellation Virgo, Mercury will be easy to spot. Compared to Spica, you might notice that Mercury has a pinkish hue to it. But you'll have to be quick if you want to see it. Mercury orbits very close to the Sun. Therefore, during the course of its year, it never gets very far away from the Sun. The disadvantage of this is that many times, Mercury gets caught in the glare of the Sun, making it very hard to see. So, you only have about 15 to 20 minutes of observing time to see Mercury before the rising Sun washes it out. So let's recap. On the night of Monday, November 3rd, look to the southwest and you'll see the red planet Mars just above Caus Borealis, the star which marks the top of the teapot in Sagittarius. And then, just before sunrise the following morning, you'll see the messenger of the gods, the planet Mercury, paying a close encounter to the bright blue star Spica as they both rise in the east. Two great planet star scoochies for your viewing pleasure. And it's all there for you to see, as long as you remember to keep, keep looking, looking up. up. Welcome back. Well, this is the uh, sea surface temperature analysis here uh, showing the scale here. So anything about blue uh, is below freezing, which would be the east side of the Arctic coast. Where there's a lot of ice, but uh, you can see areas where it's still above freezing, a little above freezing here uh, from the Chukchi Sea down in toward Kotzebue Sound. Of course, uh, much of the Bering Sea uh, pretty or above freezing, except uh, right here, uh, Kusikwim Bay. Uh, pretty close to that blue shade, so that'd be the areas you'd start to expect to see ice either form or expand, and of course the warmest area is always along the southeast coast. Uh, ice edge now uh, closed off here all along the east side, so be watching areas expanding out here to the west and northwest, as well as all along the west coast there. For the uh, marine forecast uh, for Friday tomorrow, Small craft advisories, 30 knots, pretty close to gale force winds, but uh, keeping it small craft here along the entire stretch of the coastline. Small craft advisories also over the inside waters and Lincoln Glacier Bay south 20. And then for Saturday, keep those winds uh, suddenly 20 knots, higher gusts there for Lincoln Glacier Bay, but dropping back down to 15 knots for the central and southern inside waters. And out along the coast, uh, small craft advisories here from the east at least for a portion of the day Saturday up to the north, otherwise south to southeast to mostly south here, 20 to 25 knots along the southern coast. And uh, for tomorrow, uh, possible gales here developing uh, along the North Gulf Coast ahead of that frontal boundary again, that could also extend from the Barren Islands in toward Kamishak Bay, Kodiak Island early on, but those winds will be dropping off uh, once the front pushes northward in the afternoon. Northerlies, uh, 20 to 25 knots for Cook Inlet. And then for Saturday, much lighter winds northeast for the entire inlet there at about 15 knots. And uh, 10 to 15 knot winds extend all the way down to Shelikoff Strait. Lighter southwesterlies there in the east side of Kodiak Island. Southeast 15, small craft advisory is still a possibility here for the eastern North Gulf Coast. And the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow north, 30. West 35 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Storm warnings here on the Pacific side. Southwesterlies 50 knots, coming up to 40 knots southwest of Sitkanak. 
And then for uh, Saturday for the peninsula, uh, 25 knots, so small craft advisories here dropping down. Uh, starting out gale force here for the, uh, uh, the Pacific side of the peninsula, becoming southeast uh, during the afternoon there southwest of Kodiak Island. Light variable winds for Bristol Bay. Out in the Aleutians, uh, gales out in the western areas and storm warnings. Uh, 50 to 60 knots here, sliding eastward into the Fox Islands tomorrow from a southwesterly direction, more westerly, 40 to 50 knots, as I mentioned, uh, dropping off as you head west. And then for Saturday, uh, still coming down, probably starting out with gales yet here for the Fox Islands, especially on Alaska, but small craft divisors by the afternoon on Saturday, 20 to 25 knot winds with 20 knot winds all the way out to Shimia. For the southwest coast, gales tomorrow, northwest 35. Same thing for the northern Bering Sea. Northerlies up to 35 for the Pribilof. Saturday, hold on to the gales here, St. Lawrence Island. And into the northern Bering Sea, 30 knots there. Could be a band of gales right in through here, but the low center, lighter winds, less gradient southeast 15 for uh, the Cusquam Bay area. For the Arctic coast, northeasterlies 20 to 25 knots. Central and east side gales for tomorrow on the west side, otherwise northeasterly is 30 knots. And for Saturday, gale force winds still for this area and small craft advisories uh, down to the south, but winds lightening up here on the central and east coast, northeast or east northeast at about 15. And for tonight, showers diminish over the pan and lose the next big storm, bringing the uh, storm warnings into the eastern Aleutians as well as the Bering Sea and gales. That'll swing across Kodiak Island tomorrow. The low centers track eastward. Pretty strong winds there for the Fox Islands and Alaska Peninsula. Another one coming down from the northwest. And for Saturday, more rain into the panhandle. Colder air spreads over the Bering Sea. Well, let's look at the weather. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.